Mardi Gras on Airline. <gasps> With a parade of funky outfits. It's a broken heart. <laughs> A gathering of close friends. Okay, where's your friend at? Friend, Jennifer. Jennifer! And of course, the right party spirit. I want my money. Virginia Brody works for Southwest like Reservations. She's flying from LAX right. on the last right. leg of her vacation, and she's loaded with liquor. Oh, okay, here, here, ho, ho, ho. Okay, I got all this stuff here. I'd really like to go to Chicago, but okay. I can't. I have to go to Vegas. Yeah, I get it. And look what I got. Oh. Can I bring this on board? Uh, let me see here. Uh, how many carry-ons can they bring in as far as alcohol? Oh, Two. don't tell me. No, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me. No, 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 no. Well, we got to find out. It's federal oh, regulation. Oh, you can't have oh, that much alcohol. I work for Southwest, though. Oh, <laughs> they can't exceed over 140% proof, you know? Is that right? Yeah. Me and my big mouth. <laughs> I can't believe this. I'll find out for you. Okay. Now, I'm probably going to find out some rules that I don't even know. I mean, I've only worked with Southwest all my life. Anything that's over the five liters, we're gonna go ahead and have to do something else with it. Okay, could I have my okay. friend take it? Because this is one Sure, point yeah, you've got two of you traveling? Yeah. Okay, where's your friend at? Friend? Jennifer! At Chicago Midway, the crew of the last flight to Providence have noticed some strange behavior by two of their passengers. Oh. And called in Colleen to deal with them. Teresa, are they denying them boarding because they're about to board? No, they're not going to board. Yet. I mean, well, I'll wait for you to come over. Okay, well, stop. Can I get you to stop over here for a second for me? I you know it. We're no, gonna I'm have not to deny agree. you boarding on this flight out to Southwest Airlines. We won't be able to fly you out into Providence tonight. I will lose my you job. Know, if I'm, you sorry. Do that to me. I'm sorry. No, you're not I'm sorry. sorry. We won't be able to fly you out I'm not, to I'm not drunk. You appear to be. I'm not saying that you are, Please but I'm just saying that you appear to be. You're making me lose my job. He lost his job because my mother passed away and he came and saw her. I'm sorry. So, yeah, I'm no, sorry. you don't give a Folks, I'm no, sorry. No, well, you don't care. Yeah, I am sorry. He but lost right his now. job because he came with me. Okay, I'm sorry, but right now your only option is to rebook for tomorrow. He's not drunk, and I'm not drunk. I'm At sorry. At least let him go, because I will lose my job. I'm sorry, I can't. can't lose him. We can't take a chance of you no, being upset 30,000 feet in the air. And I'm not going to be upset a disturbance. and dirty. I just want to get on to my daughter. I'm sorry. But I have a little daughter at home. I'm sorry. No, I can't let you trip. sorry. I you're am. sorry, you let me okay. go there. Okay, let's do that. This is why the we're not ever going southwest ever again. Okay. They're liars okay. and they're pieces of Please, 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 okay. please, please, calm down. Buddy, I'm not drunk. I didn't All right. say anything. Oh my, my mother God. died. What the My daughter's at home by herself. What the hell? I hope you they were observed in the concourse, getting into an altercation with each other. Um, they do appear to have been drinking. I'm not sure how long or how much. I really can't challenge the circumstances that they're sharing with me, but I have no choice. I have to consider the comfort and safety of everybody on that flight. Yeah, well, I'll lose my job now. Yeah, because you're mom. In Houston, there's a party atmosphere for Mardi Gras. Roy Rodriguez is on his way to join in the celebration. Going to New Orleans to compete in the Bourbon Street Awards, that is the epitome of all the costumes. It's a big deal. Thousands and thousands of people, news crews, goes by applause, but there's also judges. We're hoping to have a good showing. This year, we're gonna be the love bugs. Here we go, sir, I can help you right here. Carol has her beady eye on Roy's regalia. What's a girl got to do to get beads like that? Picked up my shirt. You got fur for your boobs? Yes. I'm thinking that's not right. <laughs> have you ever heard of a Mardi bra? No. You know, do you have any idea what kind of beads that would draw on this? See, that What's would get you the best that's kind of Marty beads bra. around, I tell you. <laughs> Thanks, right. Roy. Have Thanks. a good trip. As Roy flies off to his costume party, the airline staffers make do with what they have. Hey, it matches. Put a second hat. It almost matches. 
Back at Midway, Buddy fine. performs his own sobriety right. test. No, Look I'm fine. I mean, I'm oh, fine. Colin, There's nothing any, wrong with any me. State confident, any confident state would find me fine on this one. You Probably sitting in a airport. airport. On the stupid airport. They should, find me, they should at least pay for the My hotel. daughter is going to be at and the airport in Providence. We could both lose me. our jobs because of I don't want to talk about it, but I will sue this airline. Trust this me. Is, this is... Not this right. is absurd. This is ridiculous. The stress and strain is taking its toll on Paula. Can't they see how people are sad? No, she's upset. She just lost her mother. And he's... Because they think she's drunk. She's just upset. She's I'm just drunk. They won't let us on a My damn plane. Died. We had one drink over here. And they're saying we're too drunk to board the plane. She's had. upset. Understandably, she's upset. Albert, what would you like to do? Would you like me to rebook you for tomorrow, or do you want to no, call I'm and rebook? The, uh, no, I'm going on the airlines because you people suck. Okay, well here's your I tickets. I want a refund. Here's right your tickets. Now. Give me a refund on there. I want cash. Okay. I pay cash. Money. I want my money. I want okay. my money. You're gonna have we to didn't send do in any for your. No, money. I ain't sending for. Okay. You, when I book the flight, you okay. want my money. Okay. Right now, I want my money. Okay. All right. Here's your ticket. Go in the cash drawer. Give me my money. No, I won't be doing that, sir. You won't? We just no. want a ticket. Take your well, tickets. How the hell are we going to do this? I got my ticket. Okay. Kiss my um, If they keep coming up to the podium, we'll call the police. At LAX, Virginia's returning from a Caribbean cruise with her friend Jennifer. Jennifer! Yeah, Jennifer from Southwest. Jennifer, what's her last name? I don't know. Tell her, Jennifer. Jennifer, come down here. Come to Mother ASAP at the ticket encounter. Jennifer, come to Jennifer from Chicago. Say Jennifer from Chicago. Jennifer from Chicago. Jennifer from Chicago, please come down to Southwest Airlines ticket counter position number 19 and meet your party. But Jennifer has vanished. You know what? She'll be my friend till her dying day which is going to be coming up shortly. <laughs>
the, the amount of people that are there. <sighs> this is my costume. Ugh. Okay. The Love Bugs and Company set off in stately style for the parade. But progress through the Big Easy proves rather difficult. Excuse me. Excuse me. Suddenly, it's catastrophe for Roy's teammate Charles. Careful, guys. Broken heart. <laughs> the poor Sam. <laughs> oh, we have to move. We got to come up. Bugs are having some difficulties. I'm oh, sorry, Alice. What are these idiots doing? Why we came down this street, I have no idea. I, I chose a different route, uh, but I wasn't leading. Oh well. Somebody pushed me, and it caused the pipes to break inside. That's the mobbing of the crowds down here. They don't understand. They have no concept of costuming. I'll go on alone if I have to. Uh, watch my tail, hun. Yeah. Back at LAX, the Vegas flight is ready to leave, and Virginia wants to get her hands on Jennifer. She will be here. Okay. And if she doesn't get on the plane, I don't think I should get on the plane either. Jennifer. This is Virginia. We're at the station five over here. We've got about two minutes. Wherever you're hiding, come out. Or else. It's not gonna get by me. Oh lordy, dude. Okay. Be scared too. Uh station indicator is going on flight eleven thirteen to Las Vegas and Salt Lake City. Everybody's on board right now. Virginia gives up the ghost. Well guys, at least I got the liquor out. Who cares about Jennifer? Baltimore Washington International, fans of the Washington Redskins and Tampa Bay Buccaneers are putting on a show for Sue Lee. Good morning. Having fun. You ready for Gasparilla, baby? What kind of morning can you have if you don't have hoggets and pirates come through your lawn? They're flying to Tampa to take part in the city's pirate-inspired version of Mardi Gras, Gasparilla. <laughs> Gasparilla style! Last year we had over half a million people there in attendance. It's an incredible, incredible fiesta. It's one of the most fun places in the world. <laughs> the pirates and the hoggets are all going to be together handing oh, out um, beads, Three. of course, because this is our, Mar <laughs> this is our Mardi Gras. <laughs> and of course they'll be snorting and eyeing and aring. So <laughs> I'm going to trust them, Jamie, that they don't have any rum on them. <laughs> Got her again. <laughs> The flight to Tampa is in for a wild ride. Woo! Over at Midway, Buddy's trying to calm his nerves with a cigarette. We're handling it very well. There's not only going to be holes in this place. She's not drunk, she's grieving. The, the hot was They may not think they're intoxicated, and they may not think their behavior is unusual, but it might be very unusual and frightening to somebody else. But something vital to Paula's health is on that Providence flight. My blood pressure medicine and my heart medicine, I have a very bad heart, I have a bad ticker. And if I start coughing and if I get upset, and I don't have my medicine because my medicine's in that bag, I don't know what I'm going to do. It took me too, too damn long to find her. I don't want to do it if I lost her. I will know now if I ever fly, never to act like I'm sad. Buddy decides it's not just Paula that needs taking care of. And I'll take care of these mother too. Trust me. My wife needs medications. Is the medicine, is it in your bag? Yes. Her medication was in the bags. Her mother's very ill. She was in the hospital. She just flew down from around to Texas here. Just gonna check the final. This was gone on with your bag. Okay.
competition kicks off and the boys are back in business. Uh, right now we're good. It feels like everything is back in place again, just so nobody grabs and moves it. Ready to go on stage. We just want to do it. But first, it's the turn of their stiffest competition. Ladies and gentlemen, the Caterpillar with Alice. Here she comes, ladies and gentlemen, the Caterpillar from Wonderland. Come on, Alice. Yes. I saw a lot of tens up there, so I think that's a pretty good chance. So, I'm happy. Well, they were all tense? Most of them were can. Can the love bugs rise to the challenge? Over at Midway, Elaine has been unable to retrieve Paula's medicine. The only thing right now we can do for the medication is if you guys need to purchase emergency medication. We need a prescription. We need to call Rhode Island, who's a doctor to close right now. Okay, so you, she but, needs this medication. I understand, right? but if you if have... If something happens, my wife, she, she dies. Number one, I'll tear this whole damn place apart, and I will sue this place. I will own this. Is there anything else we could do for you right now? Absolutely. You've done enough. Trust me. Thank you. You've been, you've been helpful. The, other, the rest of them can kiss my ass. Hello? Yes, Mom. I'm in a really f off right now because they're stuck in the airport. This poor mom got sick. She went to the hospital and he's but she was drunk, so they threw us off the plane. We don't have a medication, nothing. We're stuck here tomorrow. We gotta sleep on these damn benches here. I'm not in a good mood right now, Mom. Something happened to her, I will tear this whole damn airport down. Yes, I am, Mom. <laughs> I love I love you, Mom. Calmed by Mother's soothing words, Buddy and Paula bed down for the first flight in the morning. Hog feast, baby. The hog feast! Back at BWI, the Hoggets and Buccaneers are handing over their pieces of eight. Let's put some beads on Mommy, okay? Okay, there we go. Thank hey, you. Mommy. Hey! hey. Hey, I get my license next week. Oh, well, there you I go. Know. It's okay. I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> Can you do that? Well, I think this is going to be a very fun flight. <laughs> We're going to Tampa together, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the piggies are crazy. They're crazy. <laughs> That's the best part of it. I love that. Yeah. The kid thing is great, yeah. ain't it? Yeah. Bad <laughs> Back in New Orleans, the love bugs are tackling one last obstacle. We can turn it, we can turn it, we can turn it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. You might have done better coming up this side. No, no, okay, let's, let's do it. Careful, you're not, you don't work with Cirque du Soleil. Uh, it's off. must now await the results. Second place with 85 points is Caterpillar from Wonderland with Alice. Oh, I'm not Alice. happy at all. Here we go, Mr. Lee Wow. <laughs> wow, this is it. This is it or nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is our best group, number one. <laughs> the love bugs. Yeah. Elated. The feeling is great. As far as what we're doing now, it's time to plan next year's costume. Got to be better than this year. Okay. And bigger. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi, Happy Mardi Gras. Gras. Any more men in dresses? Woo! Back to Tampa, baby.
Back at BWI, there's no escape for the Tampa passengers, except to become a captive audience for a bunch of jolly buccaneers. Ah, it's showtime, baby! Hey! <laughs> Woo! At Midway, there are some early birds up for the first flight to Providence. I didn't sleep. No blankets, no pillows. We didn't give us this, pillows, blankets. We this, slept on this and my this, coat. This. That was it. And then when they they uh, strip search, uh, no, searched strip us, search. she maybe pulled up my, undid my pants, lifted up my shirt. <sighs> Just harassed me. Oh, yeah. And she asked me if I had anything that was metal. I said, well, I had brain surgery five years ago. And I don't know if it's a metal or a plastic disc they put in. And she said, where is it? I said, here. And so she took the thing and went just like this. I said, thank you. She said, oh, well, I'm just trying to make sure that you, you have nothing on you. <sighs> what would I put on my head? After 12 hours stuck in the airport, Paula and Buddy finally head home. Have a good day. Take care. All right, I'll take care. Take me home. something on airlines. There's an exchange of words. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I can hear you loud and clear. Good. A change of career. If this works out for me, it really will be a dream come true. Beats the in-flight movie. And a change of address. She was dropped off by a, a shuttle service. So she didn't want all of these things to come with her today. Why are people so mean? of California. It was a freaking nightmare. She was recently mugged and is now heading home to Arizona. Liz steps in to help. No, no, I didn't check her in. She oh. was just screaming at us and said, yeah, somebody needs called. to help me. And she said someone tried to kill her. I'm a single mom trying to raise my daughter. So I came to California for the job to keep my house, to keep everything. And now look at me. Yeah, the reason why I had to come back, because the bag that they gave me, it got a hole in it. I'm losing my flight because of all this well, It's ridiculous. I gotta find out why they called you back down, because of your bag. Because the bag had a hole in it. Tammy's taking back a table and chair, but the bag's been damaged and hastily repackaged. She's now trying to check it in once more. Just like this, in the plastic? Yep. And you know what? I've had nothing but problems with you guys in doing it. This isn't really correctly packed. You guys need to know how to be doing a better job. Ma'am, 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 I gotta get to my flight. So I'm gonna leave that so you can give it to him, okay? No, you can't go yet. We're not finished. The computer is telling Liz the damaged bag made it on board. Only allowed three check pieces. Right. You already checked in three. That would right. be number four. Right. And did you not hear what I told you for the third time? That third one was a bag just like that, had a hole in it. I don't know what happened exactly. Well, I'm I telling wasn't you what there. happened. Yeah, I know. You're. I can hear you loud and clear. Good. It was about time to get some attention. At Baltimore Washington International, the last flight to West Palm Beach is delayed, leaving Nicholas with a desperate passenger. I'm not going to get there till after midnight, so I've lost my rental car. Um, I don't have a place to stay now because the woman's getting married at 10 o'clock in the morning is not going to come fetch me in the middle of downtown West Palm okay. at 1 o'clock. God knows when we're going to get in. They had overbooked the flight. I decided that I would go ahead and give up my seat and come in at 1040. I simply needed to be there by midnight. The friend that I'm staying with is getting married tomorrow at 10 a.m. and I am her maid of honor. Uh, uh, first of all, I appreciate you volunteering your seat. I don't know what to do. I mean, my rental car company closes at midnight. This okay. has turned into a nightmare. I don't, I don't, I don't like to be stranded, it. so well, no, you work with me. It, Back at LAX, Tammy and Liz are still at odds over the number of checked bags. Actually, if you want to check that, that would be item number four. It would be a $50 charge. No, why the heck would I want to pay 50 bucks when that stuff cost me like $15? Give me a break. Because it's item number four. Your guy 
guy is the one that put the hole in it. Okay, you're talking about another bag. I'm talking about if you want to check this item. I'm talking about the bag, the same bag that that stuff would have went in. Okay, well, obviously it didn't fit, or I don't know what the case was, but if you want to check I this as a fourth item. I just told you what it was. Right, if you want to check this as a fourth item, it is a $50 fee. Southwest keep Airlines, that cheap, huh? I can hear you loud and clear, and I'm asking you to keep your voice down. Yeah. And decide Why is if that? you want me to check this. Why is that? Because it's not necessary. You raising your voice. It's not necessary no, that I have not. to pay 50 bucks when I already had the bag to put it in that your man put a hole in. I told you three times now, or at least four times. If you want to check that, I mean, I told you it's six item and seven. Exactly. So if you want to decide, if you want to check that in, it is $50. I don't think so. I'll carry it on. Why? Why? You're not going to be allowed to carry it on. Yeah, I can. I did it before. I'll do it again. She was being very loud. She did miss her 2 o'clock, so she's probably standing by for the next flight out. I'm starting to sweat it a little bit. Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous. At BWI, matron of honor Jen is worried she'll be stuck at West Palm Beach Airport. Had a rental car reservation. They close, they at, close at, midnight. at midnight. Which leaves me stranded in yeah. West Palm Beach. You know, I have no place so to go can. and no way to get I'm there. Saying, you don't have Still. a way to drive to your friend's house? Uh, I had a rental car. <laughs> Remember that? Nicholas tries to find a rental company, and Jen breaks the bad news to the bride. There's no way you guys are coming from Loxahatchee to come pick me up. I know that. You're getting married tomorrow, for God's sake. So, um, I don't know what to do. I have no answers, Heather. I'm sorry. Stay tuned. Try to get some sleep. Sweet dreams. Happy wedding. I'm sorry. She's not thrilled. <laughs> I might possibly either miss her wedding or not have a place to stay tonight and be a fugitive on the streets of West Palm. But could Jen's driving record come back to haunt her? How far back does it go? Do you guys look at three years? In Sumner, Washington, Amber Farrer is putting in some practice. I've been a ballet dancer since I was three years old. Always wanted to be a ballerina, but unfortunately, I will not be needing these point shoes where I'm going. I'm going to be trading them in for some high heels. Hopefully, I'll get back into the point shoes someday, but for right now, Heels are going to be a better choice. <laughs> Amber is flying out to Sin City, Las Vegas. Bye, honey. Bye. So I thought I would take a leap of faith and let fate take over. I'm very nervous and very excited. I'm going to audition for the Follies Bergere, which is Tro the Tropicana as an acro dancer, which means tumbling mixed with dancing. I get really antsy when I have to sit for long periods of time. I would love to get out of my seat and do a little bit of stretching. Flight. You know what? I don't want to go through what I just went through with the check-in over there. I smoke and I want a cigarette. I'm going to leave it behind here. Well, if it stays here, you'll have to stay here with it. What? The police will come and take this, and they won't allow you to fly. Once they take them, then they're going to want to see who they belong to. I that I don't want something of my own, Okay. and I leave it? But you can't leave it at the airport, because it's not ours either. Does it have my name on it? Well, do you want to... have a name on it, does it? Do you want to say that this is not yours now? I can have them come pick it up right now. Why don't you put that stuff back on here? What I will do is put it on your cart for you. But you have to stay with it. I think I know that. Okay. Well, if you know that, then we don't have an issue then, right? No. Okay. But you know, you first said you weren't going to help. But I did help you, though. Yeah, but why'd you say first? You wasn't going to. Well, because you convinced me to help you. So you I won. It. So yeah. you won. There you go. That's the way it is. Yeah. That's the way it is. You play a game is what you do. No, no. You won the you argument. You played the game. You're right. You played the game. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty won. pathetic. But you won. Honey, it's not about winning. Okay. I don't care if I win or I lose. It's how you play the game and how you treat customers. You're right. 
Thank you. You're welcome. She was certainly wanting to be in control of the situation, which is why I kept telling her, okay, you've won, and uh, trying to defuse it from there. They all have attitudes. They all seem only for themselves. They're takers and not givers. I'm a giver, not a taker. It gets difficult when we're dealing with people and they're yelling and screaming at us, but, you know, all you can do is try. And that's about it. With an hour to her flight, what else could go wrong for Tam? Why Nicholas has found a rental car for Jen, but there may be a hitch. Okay. I was a bad girl. Three years ago. You are allowed to have up to three viol three moving violations in the past three years. You don't have to tell me what it was. But... Well, this is just one. It was a doozy. <laughs> okay. If you have a DUI, they're not going to rent you at all. Okay. So tell me if you want me to move forward with it. I, I would like to actually call Enterprise because I have like a frequent thing with them. That's more comfortable for you. Right there. Yeah. So you allowed one DUI and three moving violations in the past three years. <laughs> I think I'm safe. Okay. I'm not that bad. So as soon as you exit, exit off the plane, just walk up to the Enterprise counter. Right. Let them know you to pick up your car. Okay. With a rental car awaiting ending. her arrival, this matron will be honoring her commitment. That's okay. It's a happy ending. I'm coming, Heather. I'll be there soon. Take care. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Bye, guys. Because she told me to come and someone would pick me up, but I wasn't supposed to have all that crap. At LAX, Yolanda has found a passenger stranded outside the airport. Miss Toferi was dropped oh, off on the curb. She doesn't know where she's going. Oh, I didn't want those books. Oh, she wasn't safe at all. Okay, we'll go inside and try to figure this all out, okay? Connie Toferi's leaving her retirement home. My daughter is supposed to come after me to my house to pick up this thing. Uh, why are people so mean? So we found your reservation. You're reserved on the 515 departure oh, to Sacramento. It is Kate. Those things aren't supposed to be here. Can they put them in a corner so that my daughter can pick them up? If these are your things, they have to go with you. Right now, there's too many to check. We would have to charge yeah. you more for that, so we're going to try to condense it into some, some uh, yeah. larger bags. Apparently, she didn't want all of these things to come with her today, so we're not exactly sure how all of that happened. It's a little strange, but... Yeah. That wasn't supposed to come. I understand. I it was to pick it up. Right, but the thing is... They is didn't that pick we... up the suitcases that I told them to pick up, but they took all the junk that I had because my sister was coming to finish a job. And we'll give your daughter a call and just sort of let her know what's going on. <coughs> we just need to call and get a clear understanding of what we need to do to help facilitate whatever's going on because I don't know what's going on exactly, but it's detective work. Upstairs at the gate, Tammy's glad to be leaving the City of Angels. And every time I ask somebody to help me, everybody said, sorry, ain't gonna do it. It's not my job. That's your stuff. I ain't gonna help you. See ya. They're rude. They ignored me totally. And I came out here to work. And it has been a nightmare of a chore of being here. As the Phoenix flight boards, Dan and Cindy Sue lend Tammy a hand. Okay, Tammy. All right, so is that it? That's it. You're all set, Tammy. Goodbye, California. Hello, Arizona. I'm back on my baby. See you later. so exciting to be here right now. There's energy everywhere. I feel like I'm walking through the middle of a huge theme park. Amber has made it to Vegas. If this works out for me to work at the Tropicana, it really will be a dream come true. If I don't make this audition, I will be left in quite a hole because I've quit all my other positions in Washington banking on this job. to Vegas all right and everything. Showgirl Jennifer is on hand to offer some top tips. They're going to want you to be kind of cheesy, I guess. Yeah, yes. you, you know, you're going to want to have a stage presence of like, hey, I am so happy to be here. Bright pink cheeks. You're going to do red lips, dark, dark eyes, fake eyelashes. I think that's pretty. You know, probably throwing a little sex into it won't hurt. They're also really looking for personality. They really want to see how you're going to come across. 
Thank you. Good luck, Amber. You're going to be great. It's a machine. Okay, thank you. We're not able to get a hold of anyone to find out exactly what the plan is for these items, but since we can't leave them here in the airport, they have to travel with her. And I said, please take down my suitcase. There's just two of them because my daughter's coming after the rest. This is what they do. Connie and her bags can make the flight, but can Yolanda find anyone to meet them? One, two, three, four. In Vegas, Amber's one, warming two, up for her Follies Bergere audition. Four, five and six, seven, faith for that. I think I'm doing fine. I'm just a little bit nervous, so I think that's kind of jumbling my brain a little bit. But <laughs> other than that, I think I'm doing well, so I'm just going to get to practicing. Four, five, no. six, seven, eight. The judges Great. survey the wannabe recruits. They haven't retained it very well yet. I think putting on the music threw them off. It all depends on if she's a strong enough acro, which we see if we're interested in her or not. At LAX, supervisors have been called to gate 3A to pull a passenger from the plane. Why are you taking me out of the aircraft? Don't push on my back. That hurts. Uh, dispatch copy. Just had surgery. <coughs> Tammy had a run-in with the crew after getting stuck in the aircraft's restroom. This time, Denise is called in. The flight attendant asks you to do something, you have to do it. So there were some problems when I opened in the, the door, I, I was trying to open the door, I couldn't get it open. And I have claustrophobia. Like, yes, yes, and that's all that that was. Okay. And then I was trying to shut the door, I couldn't grab it because I was on it. But the flight attendants have to be very careful when they have someone on the aircraft. I'm and they sorry. Bat. It's okay, we're going to resolve it. We're going to resolve it. I can't miss this plane okay. because he's going to This gonna plane, not let, they're not letting you go on this flight. We're going to try and get you out on the next flight. That's four hours from now. No, it's not four hours from now. How long? Okay, let me look. By the love of God, let me go because they're my not. daughter is very sick. Okay, we've got a four o'clock flight going out. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? What time is it? Okay, right now it's 20 to 4. We have a 4 o'clock flight that's leaving. But in order for you to get on that plane, you're going to have to take control of your emotions right now, okay? And we'll get you home. No more disruptive or anything, behavior or yelling or anything like that. I there just was no to yelling. There was never no yelling. So saying, don't say yelling. I'm just saying in the future. Okay, before but there you get was no yelling. Travel. Okay. Correct that. Well, about we, that. we have a different story, but we'll go with until I research it. This is ridiculous. This place is pathetic. My name is Yolanda Martin. I'm a customer service supervisor here at Southwest Airlines LAX. And we have Connie Toferi here. Down at check in, Yolanda has found a relative to meet Connie. We've gotten um, Connie her boarding card, and uh, we'll have her bags screened and have the bags checked, and they'll, everything will go to Sacramento with Connie. You can work over there. <laughs> I can work in Sacramento? Yeah. I wish people like you would go out and work there. Oh, at the retirement Not home. people there. They're always. <laughs> now we're going to go over What's here. Yolanda. Yolanda. Yolanda, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're kisses. welcome. Oh. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Did you, you have your you... phone number? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. This is my telephone number, my name, and my telephone number here. So if you need anything, just let me know, okay? Oh, I will. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, so have have a good flight, Connie. In order to keep doing what I'm doing, I have to get one of those every so often, or I just lose all hope. <laughs> Back in Vegas, Amber is bending over backwards to please the judges. <laughs> I think I'm a, I don't know, I have no idea. <laughs> I thought I did all right. So I don't even know. You pass the first stage of the audition. What we're going to do is we're going to have callback auditions, uh -huh. which would, would put you on stage with everybody else who's passed the first two phases so far. Okay. 
I guess that's all I can leave with today and I'll have to come back and pass round two. California, I would never want to live here. In LA, Tammy's ready to leave California once and for all. Flight attendant says you can't go on the aircraft. That means you can't go on the aircraft. We can't. That's their plane at that point. It's not their plane. They it work is. They're it. the one, right? They're the ones that's flying it. Third time, huh? California sucks. And it's finally goodbye to the Golden State. Today we're doing our callbacks and we're just looking for talent, um, looks, and body. In Vegas, Amber is coming up against some stiff but flexible competition. You can never tell by looking at someone, so I'm sure they're all very good. Six, seven, eight. I don't get to do it very often. A little out of breath. When you smush them all together, it's a little hard. Hopefully they're watching. <laughs> if it's yes, I will be ecstatic and life will be wonderful and I will live out this particular dream. The moment of truth. 19 years of dance training. Let's call her over. Amber. Yes. Do you have a minute to come over? Just a minute. Yes. Hi. Nervous? You look so nervous. I am. You're more nervous than I am. We'd like to um, offer your position as a cast member in the Follies Brigade. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, good. Very good. You this, did a great I don't audition. think you even know what this means to me. Maybe you do. Maybe it means this to mm -hmm. everybody. But this is perfect. <laughs> good. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you okay. so much. Oh, you can give us a hug. <laughs> Welcome to the cast. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just ecstatic. I don't even know where to begin. So. It's good to know that if you go for your dreams, you can eventually get something. You can't take it with you on airline. There's some unfortunate damage in Houston. So this is what's left of your bag. Tempest Flare, BWI. It's not your problem. It's my problem. Just step away now. LAX, one woman confesses to a weight problem. This is the biggest embarrassment of my life. Terry, this is Carol in Baltimore. How are you doing? Is 1629 really still sitting out on the runway? At Baltimore Washington International, a delayed incoming flight could lead to trouble for Carol. Well, we have an aircraft with about 25 people who are connecting here that's still sitting on the runway in Fort Lauderdale. So we're not going to hold for that because there's no telling when that flight's going to leave. Two and a half hour flight, I mean, they might not get here till 6 o'clock tonight. So we're going to delete those people, which opens up seats now for our local people, which averts situation here however when the 25 people come in um, they're probably thinking they're gonna be able to get on that later flight to Buffalo but that's overbooked by quite a few so. across the terminal there's something strange going on inside William Salon's suitcase Come on, hurry up. Just don't do that. Just No, you don't do that. Just stop, man. This is my friend Wilson. What's going on, man? Shh. You're too loud. No, 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 no. You're too loud. You're the one talking. OK, I'm sorry. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Tell him your name. Say your name. Your name. No, Wilson. Yes, William. No, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Listen, listen, this is the deal. Say your name. Oh, he wanted inflections, huh? Your name. No, 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 no. 
Repeat after me, okay? Okay. My name, my name is, is Wilson Bethay. Thought your name was William Shalong. You lying on a Sunday? Okay, I'm sorry, man. You ain't need no harm, man. And I say, don't do this. No, man. Don't do this. Hey, come hey. <laughs> This is one bag William will not want to lose. Up at the gate, the flight from Fort Lauderdale finally arrives. Okay, folks, if you're going to Buffalo, just want to make sure I have everyone here. Unfortunately, you guys are going to have to be standby on the next flight, which is basically sold out. All the flights out for tomorrow is also sold out. Also, Monday is sold out. There's no other uh, carriers that leaves out of Baltimore that goes into Buffalo that you guys can purchase tickets on. The captain came on a half hour ago and said our connecting fleet was here. Uh, no. so Fort waiting. Lauderdale. Fort they Lauderdale sent us away out of work too. About it. They sent us out of Lauderdale to us to the, our plane was delayed because it was a mate. This ain't good enough. And then all our connections were going to be picked up. We're telling you what they told okay. us. Seems there's confusion about what the passengers were advised. At LAX, Jordy Vostok is headed home after a shopping spree with two overweight bags. Basically, I have too much stuff. Um, my, my weight is over the required amount, and uh, my account, my bank account is overdrawn, so I don't have the cash that I planned for these things. And, uh, Supervisor and Sheila steps in. Okay, well, our allowance is free, and if you have $25, we can sell you another bag, and then you can redistribute all your weight. <laughs> That's the best I can offer you right now. Well, all I have right now on me, period, is $17. Now, another option that I could consider, if, if you guys will allow it, I can see if my friend could charge it over the phone, pay for it. Would that work? Uh, yeah. uh, do you have an ATM card? You can get some no, money my, out? my account is overdrawn. Well, you're going to have to come up with $25 so I can sell you that bag. Will Jordy be able to raise the cash to pay for an extra bag? Have a check. Back at BWI, the passengers from Fort Lauderdale are not. Already told you guys, you guys were advised of the air traffic control delays. No, no, you no, were no. Told no. There was a mate. No, they did not. Okay, well your flight's not wondering. here. There's nothing we can accommodate no, we you guys were told on. That in Lauderdale. Okay. And where the flight was gone a long time I'm ago. I'm telling you, I have people in Buffalo waiting for me at the Buffalo airport to okay. pick me up for a 415 flight that Southwest is saying is on time. Well, Our last Cleveland flight's already gone. We pay for a rental car, I'll drive home. It's no. seven hours, they know how to get there. No. We've driven it 50 times. No, we're not. We won't, we won't pay for a day rental car? No, we won't. You guys, you guys were advised hotel? prior. No. You guys were advised prior to leaving. We Buffalo. weren't advised. Yeah, How, who's your manager? Your hotel. Who's your, your manager? manager? Sir. Well, you guys were advised prior to leaving. No, you guys. No, we were not. No, we were not. So we were not. So your flight not. was delayed for three hours. No, we were delayed. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. It was delayed. No, we're not going to wait. We waited long enough. It was delayed an hour. I stayed at that airport next to the station for a whole hour. I kept asking, "What's going to happen to our connecting flight at 310? Don't worry about. Don't worry about it. When you get in the air, it's going to be accommodated for you when we get here. The captain, the, captain got on the phone, yeah. the, captain hour before, the captain got on the so phone a half hour before getting us uh -huh. to reassure us that B-13 was standing by waiting for us. That was 15 minutes B before we got off. B-13 was standing by waiting that, for that us. That Buffalo flight didn't even go out of B-13. I don't care. I'm telling you what was told to us. That's what the captain okay. said. So we can get the captain up then. So I need something here. Okay, we can get the captain up. Get the captain and get something done. Okay, well, that's what we're doing. I need to speak to customer service supervisor Terry immediately. I've been trying to get in touch with her for quite some time now. Dressing student Jordy Bostock is still stuck with two overweight bags. She needs eight more dollars to get everything on board. The cash that I had on me is all the cash that I have, which is like $17. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's pretty much all I have access to right now. One solution that she suggested was that I purchase... Uh, <laughs> Here, 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 here. We're going to take care of you. We're going to get you like back. Here's another five. This Here's is another good. Here, five. you got two, two you got, There you go. Over. Thank you. Look, and this we'll is great. One of the Skycaps and some fellow passengers oh, come to Jordy's rescue. Oh, I mean, it's not she a big problem, though. Oh, I said, it's, it's $8. Okay, dollars. I mean, she needs to get on the plane. She doesn't have the money. What's the big deal? It shouldn't be this big of a catastrophe. That's what we're here for. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Miss Bag. <laughs> uh, they sold me a bag, and so now the, the trick is trying to get like 50% or 50 pounds into here. <laughs> but at check in, the bag still busts the scales. 53. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm going to consider this a done deal. Hallelujah. Have a great trip. Bless you. <laughs> I feel good. I'm going home now, so. And my luggage is coming with me. Need all these shoes. Uh -oh. Bye. <laughs> and I can't stay here till Tuesday. Well, they put us all on the plane and they told all of us, your planes are all connections, are all delayed all the way up the line. Do not worry about it. They told us something totally different to get us here, not your problem. Right. Well, it's not your problem, it's my problem. Sir, step away now. Step away from me now. Step away now. Step away. If you not speak reasonably, you'll need to step to the counter. The cops are telling us to back away from the desk. <laughs> We have nobody to deal with. There's nobody that wants to address our issue. So Cleveland's just standing there with nobody there, and nobody's, everybody's going, it's not our problem. Lori and Bill Morgan are trying to get home to Cleveland. A couple people get irate, and so, you know, they immediately call security, and they've got four or five guys surrounding people. they have people. no spine. These people are poor travelers trying to get home on a weekend. Hey, folks, if I can have your attention, please. Um, unfortunately, there is uh, not another flight out to Cleveland that we can accommodate you on tonight. We're gonna we send could, you yeah, we could drive home. Give us a rental car. Give us our money back. We are attempting to get you through Chicago. We're gonna send you from Baltimore to Chicago. Okay. Yeah, what do we do when we get into Chicago? Uh, there is a late flight from Chicago to Cleveland, so we're gonna route you through Chicago to get you to Cleveland tonight. So we're gonna attempt to do that for you guys. Um, at this time, there's no actual seats that I can. We're gonna fly past home, land in Chicago, sit there for three days. It's ridiculous. They want to hoard us in here now for. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Okay, I just want to make something we very something clear to, to you. All right. Okay, if your behavior doesn't improve, like right now, yeah. um, you will be escorted off the terminal by police officers. Okay, so I want you to think she about that option, done it. okay? Ma'am, you've been going back and forth, back and forth, shouting back and forth, back and forth. We're trying to accommodate everyone as best as we can. Okay. You're in front of the presence of children. I would expect you to lead by example. Thank you, have a good day. I'm going to get something to eat, Billy. I'm super stuck. This is great. This has been going on all day. Oh, So you heard the unfortunate news. What happened? Um, when your bag was on the cart when they loaded in Las Vegas, it fell off and they drug it on the cart. This is what's left of your bag. This is what was in your bag. Oh. And if you remember what's in it, okay. Um, try your hardest if you want to come back okay, here. Great. There's a little Thanks. more privacy back here. Thanks. Okay. This uh, you is... know what? Look at the. Is that? Look at the bottom of that. Was that? Oh. Probably not like that when you got it. Yeah, and I'm thinking this is probably not the design that she purchased. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh well. Um, I like the color orange, and so this was a baby M&M thing. This is unbelievable that this was smashed up. This was a tin of mints. It was like the other one, correct? Yeah. This one. It looks like. Most of my dirty clothes made it, but most of my trip trinkets did not. What, oh my what was goodness in this bag gracious. Here? Was that the M&M? There was a Paris quilt from the Hotel Paris. Okay. That's really sad. Okay. What I'll do is I'll take a report, okay. give you a report number, and we're, we're going to fix this. That's the good news. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's a little depressing. I apologize. It's time for Julie to call in a favor. <laughs> At BWI, 
the passengers bound for Buffalo are still stranded. They said that we would make it, that the flight for Buffalo would be here, but it wasn't here. We hope we can get home because I missed a lot of school and I have a lot of stuff I have to do for school on Monday. 20 minutes before we landed, the captain came on, reassured everyone on the plane who was connecting to Buffalo that our plane was going to be here. We were arriving in B-12 and that we were going to catch our plane in B-13. When we showed up, we were shuffled across the aisle over here to some incompetent guy who isn't going to help us. He's going to tell me that I have to keep my 13-month-old, i got to keep my 3-year-old here in this airport until Tuesday with no accommodations. I'm not going to get a hotel room. I'm not going to get a rental car. I'm getting no help. i got to wait here till Tuesday until they can fly us out because there's nothing available for us. That's where I am. Passenger James Stephan decides to cash in the plane tickets and drive home to Buffalo. That's Just tell me money-wise okay. what you're going to give me so I can get a car and where my luggage is. We're, we're refunding your full, your, your full ticket back to you. We can send the baggage up to Buffalo for you so that way you don't have the hassle of picking it up here, lugging it to the rental car facility. And when's it going to be there? We will put it on the 625 flight from the guard. Can I get the luggage flight. up to get my stuff that I need for the car seats? If you would like me to offload the bags for you, we will go ahead and attempt to do that for you. Okay, I'll be right back. They don't have a plane for us. Our plane left without us. Why? Because the people here made a big mistake. If they would have just told us in Fort Lauderdale that they didn't have a way to get us to Buffalo, we would have stayed there. We had a place to stay. We have family there. They, I feel that they sent us here knowing full well that this would happen. Yeah. <coughs> the two blue duffel bags <coughs> and the two blue car seats. Carousel number three is where you'll pick them up at, okay? okay. <laughs> the Buffalo. Come on. <coughs> we'll get a car. James's family begin their long drive home. But will the Morgans be spending the night at the airport? It's crazy. <laughs> make amends to Cindy Clifford, whose bag of Las Vegas souvenirs was destroyed by a baggage handler. After she left, unfortunately, I came to find out that Houston is actually the one that destroyed her bag. Um, come to find out the local driver drug her bag about 150 yards under a tire, which is why it was shredded. Got a lot to do today. Cindy is now back in baggage claim for a surprise. Well, what I've done, I know I've spoken to you on the phone, um, but I wanted to tell you that I was able to get a hold of um, a girl that I used to work with in Las Vegas. Her name is Angela Hernandez, and uh, she promptly took me up on my request and went to the M&M store, replaced oh. all the M&M stuff, all the Ethel M stuff. So oh. here is your whole box of chocolates, 10 boxes in there. Okay. That is yours. Thank you. And I don't know if you remember what your shirt was supposed to look like, but, but here's that, your, oh your unfrayed. Could you imagine, do you remember how it looked yeah, before? It was like, this is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> um, all the bags, gonna you're crazy about the bags. <gasps> oh, I love the bags. bags so much. Uh, your pens. Oh, God. You threw something extra in. So, oh. <laughs> so I've already loaded it, so all you have to do is pull the arm and um, how cute is this? <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh my god! <laughs> That's cute. That's really cute, and I love that. Whether you win or lose, you get M and M. Uh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel a lot better leaving this time than when I left on. Uh, <laughs> Cindy's obsession Bye. goes beyond Bye. her love Thank of candy. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> I'm, we're all, I'm all about orange. I love the color orange. At BWI, Emmanuel is called to the jetway to sniff out a possible problem. It's like a backpack, a big old backpack. Uh -huh. When we loaded it, the bins started smelling like gasoline. Oh, boy. Hi, if I can have your attention on board, uh, paging South Island's passenger. Phoenix passenger Eddie Stanfield is on his way to a camping trip. It's, um, actually, it's this gentleman's bag. Uh, he did. It's a camping bag. He had a stove. Yeah, I thought. I thought the, the the policy was that it couldn't have any gas in it, so I took all the gas out. If it's been used at all, and all camping equipment has okay. been tested, it can't. It can't go. Okay. Is there anybody you can call that can come get it? Because um, we can't keep it. I'm holding up the plane. Um, it's gonna be a, a goofy question, but if uh, if I if I just gave it to one of you guys, could I just call you guys and, and pick it up when I got back? Not an option. No? 
because if I uh, take a hold of it now, uh -huh. you're not gonna see it again. Right. Let me let me right. dial let me dial one number real quick. Okay. You guys don't mind. All right. Is he going or he gonna stay? Um, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna try and get him since this is the last flight to Phoenix. Yeah, you're yeah, get him back I'm on. gonna try and get him back on. Okay. With a plane load of passengers waiting for Eddie, can he find a friend to save his stove? At the gate, just when Nicholas thinks the Stefano family are driving north, they're the back with a problem. Our car seats were sent to Buffalo. I know that, ma'am. We asked you to get them off. You told us that they would. We're going to make sure you guys get the loaner car seats. I'm going to take care of this. While Nicholas goes to help Mary Ann, Diane has found seats on a Chicago flight for Bill Morgan's family. But his party of eight is now scattered around the terminal. Morgan, immediately to B-19 for boarding. Where are they? I don't know. I'm calling them. Come to hurry up. She doesn't answer us. Right? I realize that your mom's purse is sitting right there. One that you had. Uh, Lori Morgan is not with us. With no sign of his wife and friends, Bill decides to get the children home, leaving Nicholas to hunt for the missing adults. Down on the jetway, it looks like passenger Eddie Stanfield may have to go hungry on this camping trip. This aircraft is uh, we're well, supposed to leave, what, I gotta get on. minutes ago? The stove costs less than plane tickets. So you are aware that by the time you get to Phoenix, your bag is not going to have that item in there, right? Well, my bag will be there, right? The bag will be there, but okay. the item is not going to be in there. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, thanks. Sorry. Thank you. Well, tight. Take you it out. You want to go through there. it and take it out? Yeah. Hey, can you see how strong it is? As soon as we loaded it, the whole bin just filled up with fumes. I mean, it was a matter of 30 seconds, and it was, I knew exactly what it was. This cannot fly at all. As you can see, you know, there's like remnants of um, gasoline. It seems to have leaked in the passenger's bag. And it's not strong. just the stuff yeah. that won't be allowed on the plane. Nah, you're not gonna yeah. take that bag. The bag is not We can see if we can contact somebody to come pick up the bag for him, because none of the items in there can fly either, because now they've all been contaminated with gas. We can't let it travel. Emmanuel now has to let Eddie know his bag's going nowhere. Remember that? At the gate, Nicholas is searching for Bill Morgan's she's, she's wife, Lori, and her friends. She's, she's not here. So all her children and her husband boarded the flight. They don't know. They can't find her. She's not answering her cell so phone. They can't go. They're no, they're going. They're leaving her behind. Nicholas finally tracks down the missing passengers. Miss Morgan, um, I don't know if you guys realize this, but we've just been trying to page for you guys. The what? flight's already gone. What? I um, just saw you guys in the bar. You I got a call. 45. No. Your husband and children are already on board the flight. Flight's gone. It's gone? Yes. When did I tell you that? Was it your husband that I was talking to? Yeah, when yeah, to yeah. Um, and, and her I husband. spoke to him and I even said to him, could they be in the bar? And, and as we, I was we walking up, and we said, and, yeah. and I decided to stop by the bar and that's when I saw you. Basically, that dad just took all the kids. All right, so they're, they, my, they, they at least all my are kids are gone. Your kids are yeah. on with your husband. They're all so that's fine. I, I don't care. And that's your luggage is underneath. You guys have a rough day today, and you know. I know. And I'm know. really, I'm sorry. really sorry about the you know, whole well frustrating day for you guys. And we really tried taking care of you guys. And I know. I'm really yeah, you're, you're being great. I don't think you're bad. I think you were just frustrated with <laughs> the whole situation. All right. Well, we forgive you. Okay. <laughs> well, how often do you guys get to be alone without the children? <laughs> oh, no. Look at it that way. With their kids winging their way home, Lori and friends decide to hit the road. on airline. Oh my god, I'm freaking home. Passengers get confused in Chicago. They sent me to that one. And it was a whole flight. Playful in Los Angeles. This girl's gonna have fun this weekend. Margaret and Hannah. Come on! And go undercover in Houston. This young boy that's over there was impersonating an officer impersonating Secret Service. You definitely can't do that, especially now.
Houston, Southwest's oldest flight attendant, Rich Wong, has run out of patience. I just told you before. Okay. I tell you what, why don't you and I come up top? Kelly picks up the pieces of Jeffrey Swanson's identity crisis. Why would you tell them that you're a police officer and that you're there to watch the fly? I did. Are you a police officer? No. Several customers tell me that you were on board the aircraft tell them that you were a police officer for New York PD and that you were there to watch the flight. No, I didn't impersonate a police officer. I told them I was not a U.S. agent or a marshal. Okay. The flight crew, along with the, the customers that were on board, said that you did. Did you give them any reason to believe that? No, I didn't. I'm wearing this shirt. That would be the only reason why. I had four customers pull me off to the side that were sitting next to you. One said that you told them to move the newspaper out of the way so that you could keep an eye on things that were going on down the aisle. I do have concerns, though, with, with having you continue on on another flight. You know, I mean, I just don't feel safe on planes anymore in way. Have you maybe thought about driving then? I don't have a vehicle. I'm from Mississippi. Why don't you wait right over here for me, and I'll be right back with you, okay? Okay. I asked this one man if he could move his newspaper, you know, so I could see everything up front and make sure nothing would go wrong. She's saying so I might not be able to get my flight to go to Austin, Texas, to see my brother. <sighs> but Jeffrey may not be leaving Houston for some time. At LAX, Steve has a long list of standbys for the 5 o'clock to open. Tell me now. I'll drive. I'll go to my house and I'll drive there. Passenger Margaret Hannon hopes a few sweet words will get her a seat. You're going to get me on there, baby, please? Oh, we're not going to leave till 5.30. 5.30? Yes, uh, this is the beginning of the training. Marshall, I miss my friend that's going to carry all my for me, you know. I live in Santa Monica. Rent control apartment. Can't beat it. Two bedrooms, six blocks from the beach, $780. Hello. Jealous? I'm a floral designer, political activist, and sell things on eBay and live life large. You're a writer? Well, you should see how I write a napkin to <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, Omega, Akisop, Amanda, Jansen. Hi, Omega. I was standby for the 3 o'clock. Oh. oh. I was actually a passenger on the 3 o'clock. So should I be a friend of the standby? No. No. When the charm fails, Margaret goes in search of another airline. Back at Houston, yeah, Kelly calls for backup. This young boy that's over there in the NYPD shirt, mm -hmm. apparently inbound was impersonating an officer, impersonating Secret Service and so forth. They said he was acting just very strange and like one customer was reading a newspaper and he was like, move that, I gotta keep an eye on things going on down the aisle and so forth. So he upset the passengers as well. You been drinking alcohol? I smell it. Like one or two one, scotch drinks. One or two scotch drinks. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, unfortunately, it's a chance they won't let you fly today. You're acting too suspicious, telling people that you're a Secret Service, and now you're a police officer, you're a police officer, and then you're a federal agent, and all this well, stuff. Well, no, I never told well, them that. Well, yeah, well, apparently you have, all right? You know, it's against the law to impersonate a police officer. You know that, right? Yes, sir. Especially here in the state of Texas. I've lost somebody in 9 well, I mean, I understand it. You know? I understand. I think everyone in the United States has lost someone in 9-11. All right, there was a lot of planes that went down, a lot of people went down, but it still didn't give you a right to impersonate a police officer. You can't do that. You, you definitely can't do that, especially now. All right, what we're going to do right now is we're going to see if they're going to put you on a different flight. If not, you're going to stay with us, and that's going to happen. That's going to get stronger and stronger. All right, now, as long as you're, so you're calm right now, so I'm not worried about trying to put you in jail for PI or anything like that. Yes, sir. Right, but we might just stay here real quick and check with him. Well, we'll see if we can uh, find out where the flight attendant is, make sure if there's nothing else missing for y'all's part, and then we'll decide what we're going to do with him. Okay. I have $2.98 in my bank account because I spent it all on this damn ticket. In L.A., Margaret's back to standby. Ah, it's hard being poor in America. You can marry me and fly for free. I can get what? And fly for free? Marry me and fly for free. Oh, why? Are you an illegal alien? So you need to get into the country? Just whenever flights come up. No, no, no. That's actually we're going to I'm saying for your benefit. Take. Not my benefit. OK, folks, uh, let's continue with the standbys here. Sikora Bartos, party up two. Margaret and Hannah. Call me, please. Come on! Right? Last call for Peace, Margaret, love, Anna. happiness. Me, me, I'm here. I forgot. I thought they already knew who I was. 
you know, it's just because I walked away and checked out the other airlines. <laughs> you have your boarding pass? You're behaving on this flight, right? Yes, of course. Before I give you this, of you're going to be good. darling. Yes. This girl's going to have fun this weekend. She was funny, you know. She just said what she thought, and she entertained me for a minute. <laughs> Here. They paid her twice. I think she had the page, otherwise she would have missed that flight too. But we, we wouldn't want her to miss that flight as well. <laughs> My plane just took off without me. At Midway, Taz Fane is in a bit of a tizzy. They sent me to the wrong gate, okay? My plane took off without me, because it was out here. And they sent me to that one. Who sent you there? So I, found the, I talked to somebody, I asked them, I go, where to go? And they took me, they sent me to B11, and it was a wrong flight. I'm gonna need you to calm down, so just calm down, okay? It's already gone, it pulled out. Hold on, ma'am. The only other thing we could do is put you on a later flight. My luggage and everything? That's fine, your luggage is gonna be fine. If it gets into Tampa, it'll be in the bag of I service. Am not there. This <laughs> when you, when you, that's fine. Okay. They said, no, it's B11, go there. And that's where I went. And then all of a sudden it was B1. And then I'm pull I ran up here and they're like, plane's pulling out. I'm like, great. Do you want to go nonstop to Tampa or do you want to go get off the plane? I'm going to nonstop. Okay. Okay. Well, the next nonstop is not until 7:20. It's a five-hour wait, but is it just disappointment that's gotten Taz all fired up? Jerry think that she may be drinking. Yeah, he's mm. smoked alcohol. Houston, Jeffrey's fate okay. rests in the hands of Rich Wong. He told us he was with the New York Police Department when he got on the airplane, and that he wanted a spot to sit on the airplane where he could watch the airplane. And then he started to tell us that he was like a federal marshal, but he was under top secret stuff. And I told him, you don't have to watch over this airplane. I'm keeping watching this airplane. I said, you don't have any credentials. You're not a federal marshal, so sit down. Well, he wouldn't stay seated. He kept coming back there and bothered us through the whole trip about this and that. So I finally told him, look, you're just full of Now go sit out, OK? okay. Mm -hmm. So he said I was cussing him out. I said I wasn't cussing him out. Mm -hmm. I just, he was just full of crap. Right. Let me ask you this, Rich. Did he show you any type of credential? No, no credentials. Did he tell you to go and do something else? He was a police officer. No, he didn't. Yeah. OK. This man in front of him had a newspaper up. He went over there and moved the man's hand over with a newspaper and said, I, could you move your newspaper over so I can look down the aisle? <laughs> we don't play those kind of games, not these days after 9-11 especially. I'm just going to go evaluate it now and see what HPD says. If they say he's OK, then I'm going to let him go. I'm just going to have him wait a little bit. If they say he broke the law, then he's, he's not going to go anywhere. In Chicago, Teresa checks in on Taz. Have you been drinking anything? No. No? And you're OK? Yes. Sure? I'm just nervous. OK. Well, let me, let me, let me uh, buy you some dinner and get you something to eat. Um, you want to come back? Want to come back over here? What, what is this one? <laughs> this is really cute. This is nice. Thanks. I like that. I it on the floor, and people are walking by and jumping. <laughs> really? It's really, really cool. cool. This is really neat. Hopefully, this will calm your nerve down. I would have been rather stuck in Cleveland, though, <laughs> my family was. Chicago is a lovely place. <laughs> yeah, I'm passing through. <laughs> Come back here, let's say about 6.50 for the flight. I ain't moving. Time. I'm going to go eat, and I'm sitting right there. Okay. I ain't moving, because okay. they ain't leaving I'll me again. I'll back and make sure that you're on that flight. <laughs> to Tampa. Okay. And you're going to be here, right? I'm going to be here. I'm gonna you come promise back. me. I, promise I am you. on that flight. I promise you I won't let you miss another flight. You'll hold my hand and everything. I'll hold your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. We spoke to the flight attendant, and uh, they confirmed that uh, you were basically being a nuisance on the flight, as far as that's concerned. Uh, fortunate thing for you is that you did not interfere with the flight, OK? And uh, yes, you did sir. finally go and sit down when he instructed you to go and sit down. Yes, sir. OK? We cannot and we will not tolerate any type of activity such as what you've just done. 
you become very close to being arrested on top of that for impersonating a police officer by yes. merely stating that you are. Yes, sir. Okay? What I need you to do is to make sure that there are not any other problems. Yes, sir. Because if there are, then we will have to get involved. And if we get involved, then it's going to be problems for you. Yes, sir. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Just, just make sure that you don't do that. That's not nothing to play with, okay? Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Good news is he's not going to jail. Apparently he didn't break the law, so, I mean, I, I think he's safe to fly. All right, I'm going to send a supervisor to check on you, okay, right before departure. All right, you me okay? Do you need anything? You sure? Yeah. You're not convincing me. This is real, this is real messed up. Is there something I can do to help? <sighs> What's got you upset? That and the fact that all of them, you know, lied, whatever, and just take their word for it. Back in Chicago, Taz's nerves have suffered a relapse. Oh my God, I'm freaking out. All right, uh, just pick me up in Tampa at 10.50. I came here for a funeral, it wasn't like, a vacation or anything, you know. Some, but I mean, I did see my sisters and my brothers and everything that I haven't seen my friends in 15 years, you know. So I mean, I did have some good out of it, but I just wanted to go home. I'm afraid to move from this spot right now. <laughs> Make sure I'm on that plane. That's all I care about right now. <laughs> Hi, dude. What's happening? Like a do. <laughs> Taz makes it onto the last flight to Tampa. It's another sizzling day at LAX, but that won't help Mike or the passengers to Philadelphia. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for flight 667, I think we have like 110 people in the gate area. We just got notification that this flight is gonna be canceled due to thunderstorms in the area. As you can see, people are queuing up over here in front here. We'll take you one at a time, so I'll try to answer your questions as best as possible. As soon as I get more information, I'll make another announcement. Thank you. My luggage is on that flight. I won't lose my luggage. Okay. Won't wait for, won't wait for me. The bag's not going right now. We might be downloading all the bags. So one second, one thing at a time, okay? If we can't get out, what are we going to do then? I don't know. You're going to have to come up with an alternative. Damn it. My luggage is on the flight. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this flight is showing. It's going to be, it is canceled. We don't have any other flights getting to Philly this evening. Uh, at this point here, we will be down belting the bags, the baggage carousel, so you'll need to pick up your bags. How am I going to get, I want to get my suitcase. If I'm not going, we'll be able to get our luggage. He's looking a little freaked out. In Chicago, Scooch and Joy Schultz are new to Southwest and present a canine conundrum for Carrie and Teresa. She has a passenger who is trying to travel with a dog, a small dog. She doesn't have a letter. He's not a service man. I live in Bolingbrook. My husband and I own a business, and he works out of Tampa. So I fly back and forth to Tampa about once every two weeks. This is the first time I've flown Southwest with him, and apparently the captain has the last word. So when the plane pulls in, they're going to talk to the captain and find out whether he can go or not. He loves to travel. He's just a great travel buddy. He's a good dog. I'm just hoping the pilot takes mercy, has some mercy on me, and lets me take him with me. He's a pretty quiet dog, but I had already explained to him that when the plane pulls in, we would talk to the captain to see what he was saying. He's a mini dachshund. His face turned white when his brother died. They were really close. His brother fell in a pool and drowned, and like overnight, his face turned white. With the plane pulling in, how does Carrie rate their chances? 50-50. <laughs> Back at LAX, Mike tests his skills at crowd control. If you don't have a flight for us, you have to provide us another carrier. Yeah, dude, no. that's what you have to. need to no, do. You guys should we have, a... we have meetings to attend. Okay. Okay. I can't, okay. I can't, I can't just uh, tell you, like, stay here a week. Right. And unfortunately, when you have a situation where it's weather, that's out of our control. We're not responsible. You have to rebook us. No, sir, we... You have to rebook okay. us. Oh, yes. What yes. for? Yes. First of all, I'm going to talk with you, so please don't yell yeah, at me. Yeah, I'm not okay. yelling. I, I want you to hear 
time if you like. I'm having a conversation with one second, sir, okay? One at a time. You have to rebook it. Okay, I'm saying if everyone wants to stay here, they can stay here. I'll stay in the next three hours trying to rebook okay. people. But the best bet is to call 1-800 number and try to book yourself. I don't think so. Okay, well, you, no, I'm no. just giving you as an yeah, option. That, that wouldn't work. Okay. No, no, All right, no, you're not. Right. On the phone, they don't fix right. anything. Uh, that's not true, sir. No, they're always I'm like that. To get no. They're that's always like that. Southwest always like that. Okay, sir. I know that. I know that. Can we What's get a hotel? You certainly get a hotel, but it's at your cost. We're not going to pay for a hotel because of weather, sir. What is wrong with this aircraft that it can't take us to Philadelphia once air traffic gets back on the schedule there? You're not Our afraid. slot is, is closed. Okay. We have a slot. This this plane's five hours. Go somewhere, right? I don't know where this flight's going, sir, okay. but it's not going to Philly. If the weather is bad, I mean, they can't do anything about it, but I don't think it's the real truth. In Houston, Jeffrey's a changed man. I took my T-shirt off because I didn't want any, any more trouble with that, with the NYPD shirt. Yeah, I'm grateful for being off, and I wish I was already there right now, but I guess obviously since that delay, the flight attendant or whatever he was saying, if he cussed me out or whatnot, but just be grateful to get back so I can see my brother. In Chicago, Scooch's Tampa flight has arrived, and Carrie is eager to collar the captain. There is a lady out here getting on this one. She has a dog that is not an assistance animal and not an emotional support animal. Her and her husband have a business out there. She says it's fine if you guys say no. She'll just take another airplane tomorrow. Uh, I don't have a choice. We no. Can't, can't take it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. Don't be sorry. I mean, it's up to the captain whether I'm going to be able to bring him with me or not. I'll call you back when I find out. Okay. Uh, he said no. He said no? <laughs> okay. If you want, I'll refund the ticket. I would like that, yes. Thank What's you. your last name? Schultz. Hello. He said no. They're refunding my ticket. Okay. Guess I'm going home. I'm really upset. I'm very sorry, Joy. I don't suppose you can give me a hand getting on a different flight to Tampa. I can see what else, who else is going out tonight. Yeah. Back in LA, Mike has pacified most of the Philly passengers, but not Joseph F. Folder. This gentleman's been patient. He's been patient. He just walked up, so I'll be glad to answer any questions. What the hell are you doing since 12 o'clock if not being patient? Okay, well, I'm actually be a little bit more patient because these gentlemen were ahead of you, and I got to take the first ones in front. So just wait. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Give us the, the flight was, regulations. The flight was don't canceled. Stand in the line for nothing. Okay, the flight was. You don't have to stand in line. You can call and rebook if you'd like to. Who's gonna pay my shuttle expenses? Okay, we're not paying for shuttles or lodging, sir. That's not. That's not an option. You call that an airline of today? I'm an expert yeah. trooper. I fly, I jump, I fight for this country. This is the garbage we get. No problem, it's a weather. So why everybody is stressed out? I'm a hospice nurse, we have to all be loved, no worry. Just, you know, it just, it just something happened. should be responsible no, honey, for, the, for responsible. the shuttle. <laughs> no. The, but I pay for the shuttle. Not really, dear, because And my time. No. They don't even give me a watch to take a shuttle back home. No. I think we could afford it. We live in America. Huh? I'm disgusted. The whole line, the airline business, not just Southwest, all of them. When I have a bad experience with an airline, I never return. I dump Lufthansa, I dumped double A. No. I find the JetBlue, I find another airline. This is BS. Thank you. When you have situations with weather, I mean, that's out of our control. We consider it like an act of God. It's Mother Nature rearing her ugly head. It's Murphy's Law. What could go wrong for them has gone wrong today. In Chicago, Carrie's search for joy and scooch has come to an end. There's nothing left out of here tonight that's not a Southwest flight. Well, I guess I'll just go surf. See what I can find, so. I'm sorry. All right. I guess we're going home, Scooch. Mm -hmm.
Things go bump in the airport on airline. With ghostly goings on in Kentucky. I want to find out if you are a spirit here in the airport. A passenger on the rampage at BWI. BWI. <laughs> Flush it down the toilet, babe. While in Houston, we have a problem. It was in a matter of 30 seconds. seconds. But he should have said something and not he just let us go right. like that. In Louisville, Kentucky, renowned ghost hunter Patty Starr and her husband Chuck are on a mission. We are going to Birmingham, Alabama. May I have the last name, please? Starr, S-T-A-R-R. -R. Is that Patricia and Charles? Yes, it is. Are you traveling out today for pleasure? What it is, really, is we're going to Birmingham. We're ghost hunters. We're going to do a ghost investigation of an old factory down there. In a factory? Lots of hauntings there. Wow. Some not so friendly, but uh, we want to uh, check it out and see. Do they have any accidents in this factory? As a matter of fact, one of the cruel foremans at the factory that uh, had no consideration for anybody's life, and several people lost their lives because of him, uh, mysteriously fell off into the vat and was killed. So that's possibly why there's haunting. Uh, uh, well, that's what we think. That's why we want to go check it out. Sounds very exciting. I hope <laughs> I hear that you're successful. I do, too. But you know, ghost hunting is kind of like fishing. Sometimes you catch them and sometimes you don't. <laughs> I have a, a, a belief that ghosts are everywhere. Ever since I was very small, it was just these little things that would happen to me when I was younger to make me really want to find out, is this all in my mind or is this really happening? At Baltimore Washington International, Diane has removed two passengers, Joe and Ray, from a flight to Florida. Well, they were saying he was too drunk to get on the plane. And so they threw me off. That's America for you, baby. I could have stayed on a plane and left my friend, but he has no money. Can I send him home and just get my ticket back? Does he live around here? I live Point. in Baltimore. You live in Baltimore? Yes. And where do you live? I live in Baltimore, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Federal and, area. And were you just going to take him home to St. Petersburg? I was Petersburg? flying that, and you know what? I was going to jump in the ocean and swim with the sharks, on. Right. That's what Daddy was doing. And spend some money and have fun. That's all I, that's my life. I spend money. I don't care about it. All righty. Well, the earliest you're going to be able to go. Doing to you. Know, wow. The earliest that Yo, you're going to be baby. able to go ah. is tomorrow. No. But you, tomorrow's not going to work for you? No, I'll send him now and I'll take my ticket back and let him go back. See, but I can, can I go now? No. See, now I can't go now either. No. See? No, I, I think both of you are going to probably have to overnight here. No, I'll, I'll just give my money back okay. for my tickets, hon. And... Is that what you want to do? Yes, ma'am. Back in Kentucky, ghost hunter Patty is checking for spirits in the airport. The first thing I always do is I want to make sure that we're not picking up foreign energy, and we're not, see? We're not picking up any foreign energy. So if this goes off, I'll get pretty excited. Now, I'm going to put the probe here, put this in my pocket. This one will pick up man-made energies. This one will pick up more of the ghostly energy. See, it's going. Most of the energy I felt here, but doesn't seem like it's registering. What I'm trying to do is pick up an electronic disturbance, something that lets me know that an other um, energy that has an electromagnetic field has bumped into... Okay, did you see that? Now that's what I want to get excited about. And then sometimes they'll hover over us. Let's see if I have anything hovering over you, Chuck. 
No, nothing's on you. Hello, ma'am. Do you have a ghost? No. Oops. No. Nope. I'm going to walk down just a little ways here. Watch. It goes off. It's getting slower. I'm getting closer. Do you see how it delayed before it went out? There it is. Oh, oh, I've got both verifications, guys. Did you see that? Both meters went off. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back at BWI, Diane's arranging a ticket refund for Joe and Ray. All right, here's your tickets. <laughs> Mr. Blueford. <laughs> Mr. Blueford. Come on, hon. I'm okay, only joking, here's babe. your tickets. Yes, ma'am. Now, you're going to need those. You I need want to you get to my go money up back. The, the ticket counter. Nicholas. Which way is that, sweetheart? That way. Yeah, oh, baby. They were uh, on board, and we were going to leave them on. But the problem was is that Mr. Hood couldn't hook his seatbelt at all. So I walked back, and I talked to him, and I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm really good, but I'm really scared to fly. He's scared to death. That's why he's been drinking. Meanwhile, back in Louisville. Oh, 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 now watch, watch this. I'm gonna be perfectly still. I'm gonna ask some yes and no questions. Okay, sweetheart, I wanna find, okay, okay. I wanna find out if you are a spirit here in the airport. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, are you a female spirit? Oh, thank you so much. Are you happy here? Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you looking for someone? Oh, I'm so sorry. So you are looking for someone. You think you'll find them here at the airport? Are you still with us? Have you left now? I'm going to conclude our, our questions now and walk away. It's now time for Patty and Chuck to board their flight to Alabama, where the ghost hunting will begin in earnest. While in Houston, two passengers have missed their flight to Dallas. When I checked in, he gave me this instead of my boarding pass. Uh, what time did you arrive, ma'am, here at the airport? I arrived at 2.30. Okay, ma'am, well, what happened was that flight was ultimately 10-minute rule. Okay, after the 10-minute rule announcement, we make an announcement that all remaining seats will be given to standby passengers. He checked me and my associate together, and then he gave me that. I went to get on the plane, and it wasn't a boarding pass. It was a security tag, so they gave the seats away. Chance presents the dilemma to passengers Joan and David. It's been given away, okay? 20 minutes before departure, all check-in is reserved. You think he should have said something instead of saying, Here's your boarding we would, pass? We, we wouldn't know. So you got to get pass. us together. We have bigs on the flight. Please oh, we have a meeting. see if you can get a volunteer to. I won't be able to because we've already gone ahead and given the seat away. That's... What I'll be able to do is give your seat to someone and put you guys on the yeah, next available Yeah, but the next two flights are... The, that's an hour from now. I realize that. I can't force someone else. Can you ask a volunteer? Ask a volunteer? No, this yeah. plane is ready to go. As a matter of fact, it's already running late. It's going to get even the later. What The 3.30? The 3.30 flight is sold out. In fact, we're struggling to find volunteers to accommodate people with an actual reservation on the 3.30 flight. But we're on this 3 really o'clock flight. It, this I, shouldn't I happen. That. And he didn't specify to us. He didn't. I have a boarding. If you think if he gave me a boarding pass, he would give her the same boarding pass. Evidently, you guys are right yeah. at the cutoff. And, and I so think that you, you got anything? yours, and then the clock switched over, and then... We, it was in a matter of 30 seconds. seconds. One uh, person in the party of two was able to check in and get a boarding pass for his scheduled flight. At that precise moment, the clock switched over to three, uh, excuse me, 241, and anything less than 20 minutes from flight time is restricted to gate check-in. Their bad timing could be the start of a bad day for chance. At LAX, there's one very tired passenger who's missed his flight to Salt Lake City. I've been traveling for yeah, almost 20 hours now, so I'm just yeah, I'm getting a little tired now. Brian Keith's on his way home from Japan, and Mike Carr wants to know why he missed his flight. did now for that other flight, so it appears everyone else was able to make that flight, so I don't know if, if there, why you didn't hear it. Well, I'll tell you where I was. I was sitting right over there eating. Oh, are you in the bar or restaurant area? Yeah, I was having was lunch. And, that, and that's the reason, because there's no patient system there in the bar area or restaurant area. So I'm sorry that you weren't in the gate area when they made the gate announcement changes, but the flight's going out full. Worst case scenario is the flight leaves at 545. You'll get on that definitely. That we get you to 825. Sorry you've been here all day. Oh, man. Well, hang in there. And uh, like I said, we'll find out in a few minutes what's going on here. Then I can let you know. Feel bad for him. He said he's been up for 20 hours. And we're just going to wait and see if uh, maybe some people don't show up for this flight or miss this flight. 
then we can accommodate Mr. Keith on this flight and end his journey. Back at BWI, Joe's on the rampage to get his money back. Unfair? Man, it's damn right it's unfair. I paid for my tickets and everything, and now I gotta go cash them in. I don't even know where the hell I'm going, but I want my money back. Cause my friend, he, he never flew in his life. I'm, 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 I'm taking him home. What's up with that? I'm, I'm gonna send him back to Florida, and I'm gonna take a little vacation. Big deal, big deal. And then he say, cause he's scared of flying, he gotta get off the plane. <laughs> my money, hey, my money's good as anybody else's, bro. Better. Better. You know what? BWI. Flush it down the toilet, babe. <laughs> Flush it. In Houston, Joan and David are still upset about missing the 3 o'clock flight to Dallas. And as you can see, all these people have an important reason for going to Dallas. We should have been on that plane. We should have. And the ticket agent, then you can go up there. I'm sure you could tell who the ticket agent was. He did not handle it appropriately whatsoever. He didn't even give me my boarding pass. I had to ask for it. I said, where's my boarding pass? While at LAX, a tired Brian takes a much calmer approach. We're going to wait. As soon as this group is boarded, then we're going to go see if there's like a missing seat or whatnot, and we'll try to get you on. And if not, then we're just clear for the sure. next flight. OK, great. Right. Just hang right here. Sure. I want to go home. I'm tired. <laughs> With both flights overbooked, Mike and Chance need to find some spare seats fast. Chance tries asking for volunteers. Are any of you guys flexible enough to take the 4 o'clock flight? I'll compensate you for your seat if you are. I can do that. For 30 minutes of your time. I'll stay with you. Would you be willing to do that? OK, thank you so much. While Mike makes one last check for missing passengers. I'll take those from you guys, these here. They're the last two. Go ahead, go right on board. They originally said, yeah, you're going to be on this plane, but now they're starting to say, well, Maybe you're going to be on this plane, and it sounds like probably I won't be. Meanwhile, at BWI, Joe's in need of some direction. Where I, I got a brief on the ticket. Where I go at? What Southwest. You're gonna go straight up this way, and then to the right once you go by the ticket counters. And there's a sweet woman there. Look at that. Look at that. She's a, she's doing her job, bro. <laughs> you need some money, baby? Here, come here. What you need? I'll give you a hundred bucks. Come here. Come here, baby. Hey. <laughs> you going to go gamble? <laughs> no, I'm. Kevin, who Good are you, darling? It doesn't matter, baby. <laughs> Thank you <Yeah>. very much. <laughs> God must bless some people. <laughs> Back in Houston, Joan and David wait for news of their flight. While Brian bides his time at LAX. Peter Adowski in the gate area, Peter Adowski. With a passenger missing, there's an end in sight for Brian. But for Joan and David, their luck is running out. Were you willing to wait until 4, or do you need to go? You need to get going. OK, I understand. How are you making out with us? Do you know? You're not going to make this flight. You're not going to make this flight. I'd like to say yes. I'm still struggling to get people with the reservation for this flight. You know, I don't even feel like there was an attempt made. I, I've, I've really got my hands like full right now. No, I just I just have to address yeah, this situation. And but then, my situation is just easily pushed off. I just can't stop what I'm doing. Offering compensation to people to get well, off because the they were booked on the three thirty. Well, I was booked on the three o'clock. But, right, but your, my seat, compensation. your seat had been given away to a standby because you hadn't been here in time to clean. Yeah. I want to address your questions and I want to give you my undivided attention. But please allow me the opportunity to help. I promise I'll be with you as soon as I can. And and it doesn't matter because I have. I have no choice because I'm here till 4 o'clock, no matter why. In Birmingham, Alabama, ghost hunters Patty and Chuck have arrived at their haunted destination. They're joined by psychic medium Chip Kofi. This is the place. Yes. Wow. It's fabulous. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It just looks like it's stuck in time. Site manager Ronnie fills them in on the factory's past. Great. Back at some time in our history, people used to commit suicide no. by jumping into the How many people, oh how many people have died here? We don't really know what uh -huh. you think. I would say, on average, it could be anywhere from one a day uh, or thereabouts, or either maimed or killed oh. or injured or something like that. 
Now, this is the blowing engine building. Mm -hmm. This is where the majority of the men work. Okay. And if you're going to find any paranormal activity, you would definitely find it in here. Oh, all right. So, uh, so you're going in with us, huh? I'll wait here till you get through. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you yeah. need me, just holler. Uh, oh, we will. Okay. We'll, we'll holler. Good luck. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think they're going to be scared out of their wits once it gets a little darker. Honey, do you have your flashlight? I've got mine here. You got yours? Can you flash on us? At BWI, Joe finally finds the ticket counter for his refund, but his mood hasn't improved. Steve, I'm my money back. I'm my money back. Did they just send you up from the gates? Yes, they did, did baby. Wilford and Hood. Yes, sir. Look, my friend's afraid to fly. Okay. I'm not. No, hold up, Chief. I spent my money. My money's good. I got more money than God's got. Can I help the next person in line, Wow, that's a lot of money. Yes, it the is, baby. And then you, you want to treat me like I'm a piece of But well, why would you say that? I paid for your ticket. I paid for my ticket. Okay. Why they throw me off the plane, too? I don't understand well, that. Are you going to leave him behind? Hey, damn, Skippy, what if I was going to Florida? I was okay. going in the ocean, Chief. Compensate for that. You ought to give me a free flight. Give me my money, man. All right. In Birmingham, the ghost hunt is underway. The whole aspect that I'm getting out of this is there's a male, and it's a, it's a middle-aged male, and it's a lost body part. No way. Is that what you're getting here? Yep. Can you get um, a, a time frame, a year, or anything like that? I know his name. You do? What is it? Samuel. Samuel, this is my meter. If you will make my meter go off with your energy, the light will blink red. Can you do that? Why are you bleeding? No. That is blood. You said you, you were picking up a, 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 an injured limb, a lost limb here, right? There is blood on your hands. Are you cut? That I'm saying. Where did the blood come from? Oh, goodness, Chip. That's pretty gross. Was this injury detrimental to his health? Did he lose his um, life from it? Yeah. No, OK. He just lost a limb. Just lost a limb. OK. At LAX, Brian is still waiting for a final call. I've never had trouble like this before. So everything's going wrong today. I'm not saying it's all Southwest folks. And in Houston, Joan and David are keeping their fingers crossed. I'm going to get you on the fork. That's a guarantee. I'm just get on there. I'm trying. I'm trying, but no, it doesn't appear that way. It's going to be right down to the wire. Looks like we have two no-shows that had boarding passes for this flight, so it looks like you and your travel partner are going to go. We're going to go ahead and get them on. We had two people that had checked in with boarding passes on the Internet that had failed to show up. So it worked out for us, and we're going to try to get them on and get this plane out of here on schedule. Good outcome. Joan and David's persistence has paid off. But what about Brian and the missing passenger? Mr. Keith, Peter Odowski showed up. So unfortunately, the next flight is going to be the 545. When I first got here at 8, if I knew I was leaving at 545, I just would have gone crazy, right? But right now, it doesn't sound so bad. It's only two hours away. So. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, at least. Yeah, just go to, like, you go to McDonald's or this food place here. That's $10 uh, towards a meal. All right. Well, Mr. Keith actually was very patient. I mean, I feel bad for him. He's been through a lot today. He's been up for over 20 hours. He's been actually very nice, considering what he's been through. I'm sure he's drained, and he just wants to get to his destination. Back at BWI, Joe's reached the end of his rope. I get mad. I get said, you, treat, you don't treat me like a piece of my money spent, look, Chief. That's a lot of money. It's pocket change, Chief. You want to borrow a couple of dollars? No, thank you. I got enough. I work for Southwest. Look at this. I got so much money. It's, it's unreal. Come here. You want to in, Independently wealthy? Am I ever. It's called stock markets, bro. You dabble do, and you make money. Maybe you can give me a lesson one day. I won't give you because I don't like your airline, Chief. Always Never sorry again. You feel that way. There you go. You know what? You have a bad day today, Chief. Well, I'm having a great day. I plan on having a great day. No, you have a you have a bad week. I hope your week gets yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, you think so, Chief? I'm sorry Chief? about that, sir. You think so? You need to get the taxis straight on down this way. Uh oh, something said. Take a picture here. Grab the straight.
Back in Birmingham, Patty has captured a ghostly image. Huge. Can you blow that up, Patty? Can you blow the orb up? Mm-hmm. There it is. There you go. That's what an orb looks like. And she's not the only one. Oh, my gosh. Did you get the same thing? Where did oh you my. get that? Oh, my. When? Oh, my. Just now? That's amazing. The sound recordist has also photographed an image. I took three shots of the same okay. place just to make okay. sure I didn't get lens flares. Okay. I took four shots and then all of a sudden okay. that came up right now where look your feet. At, now look, look, bring it up. Look how it's exact. I go behind him and take a picture and I get the same <laughs> type of orb with the same type of nucleus and the same type of coloring. They are the same. This is probably a spirit orb. Back at BWI, Joe gets in the last word. That's America for you, baby. They f***ing, they f***ing you at the f***ing airport, man. You know what this place, BWI. The pieces of man. I heard he was giving money to, to strangers. Very charitable case. Yeah, very charitable. I guess he went a little too charitable with the alcohol, too. You need some money, man? You need a drink? Well, I'll drink six of them for you. Oh, man. In Birmingham, the ghost hunt is over. When we come here and we take literally hundreds of pictures, and then we get one picture from one camera, and then I take a picture in the same area and get the same size, the same nucleus with color, then I find that difficult to believe that we've either got a light flare or a bug. I really feel like that maybe we have captured what we refer to as a spirit orb. And before they leave, Patty imparts a ghostly incantation. Now that we have finished our investigation and our souls are focused, our minds are one, and our lights are shining in harmony. We ask that the angels will touch each one of the spirits here with divine guidance and love while assisting them with their final journey into the light for their own eternal salvation. Amen. <laughs>